Thank you, Kent. Um, you know, this time of the year, um, you know, the second phase of recruiting, so we're, uh, you know, hard at it. Uh, I got a chance today to uh, spend a little bit of time in the Chicago area. Of course, I have some great prospects coming up in the past. Uh, but so recruiting, you know, that's one phase that we're trying to improve our ball club. The other thing that you can do right now for us, and this time of year, uh, you know, sometimes staff changes happen, um, and that's where we are a little bit right now. But uh, when you, you do have some movement, you get a chance to bring some uh, new blood, some new people on board a little bit. So we have a, you know, we've had a couple uh, spots available, and I've had a chance to go out and talk to a lot of people. And you always have a list ready, you know, at every position in case uh, you need it. And uh, I've had a chance. Uh, you know, to, again, to talk, interview a lot of different people, and and uh, we've we're fortunate to be able to hire uh, the two men that I'm going to talk about here today. Uh, first off, the guy that will be coaching our tight ends will be Corey Patterson. Um, last year, got a chance to know Corey, uh, recruiting uh, one of his players, Larry Boyd. That's that's really uh, done well in our program. But I uh, got a chance to see him uh, mentor. Uh, teach, uh, you know, on and off the football field. And, and uh, I knew then if someday we did have an opportunity to get him on our staff, I was going to do everything possible to make sure that that happened. Uh, Corey's done an outstanding job down in the St. Louis area uh, at Trinity Catholic. Uh, he built their program up. Uh, of course, they're winning uh, a lot of games right now, and he's really sending out good guys going on to different programs. But anyway, uh, really excited about Corey coaching our tight ends. And I guess I'll bring him up here first and let him say a few words, and then we'll take some questions. Thanks, Coach. Um, I, just, um, I don't have a whole lot to say. I just want to say um, I'm very grateful for being here. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the opportunity, and I'm really just ready to get to work. So... Um, if you guys have any questions for me, I'm I'm definitely open for that. Corey, what's this last week been like for you? Is you say goodbye to people, you try to move, you do all, what, what's been it's been like for you? Um, everything's been moving kind of fast. I'm I'm still not all the way settled in. I'm trying to get focused and get ready to go. Yeah. Coach Patterson, what's going to be the hardest part of this job? Mm, I'm not 100 percent sure yet. I'm ready to. Right now, I just got my nose down, my head down, and working and trying to get everything situated right now. Uh, you have to ask me that question in a few more months. What was this process like for you? Well, you said he wanted to get you on staff at some point. Um, what was the interview process like? And I heard he got you on a board drawing plays. And <laughs> oh, yeah, we had a, we had opportunity to talk ball, and um, that was just an eye-opening thing for me. I had the opportunity to talk with Coach Smith, talk, ball, talk real ball with him. That was great for me, so um, I enjoyed that process. and. Um, we did a lot of that, watched some games together, and um, and the opportunity came, and I was, I'm just, I'm elated right now to even be in this position. So, right now I'm still kind of the young guy that's just happy to be here right now. What can you do as a high school coach to prepare for this kind of opportunity? You know, in terms of thinking about recruiting and all this, what, what have you done to get ready to be where you are now? Yes. I think um, the things that, that make me um, a pretty good coach. It's the same things that I'll continue doing. Um, just getting to know my guys, being there for them, um, working hard with them, not just getting on them, um, helping to build and grow young men. I think that'll be the biggest thing to do. Um, the football, kind of, that'll, that'll kind of handle itself. Not a lot of coaches in your position have been on the other side of the recruiting process. So you've probably seen the good and the bad. What are some, some lessons, some, some positives that college coaches showed to you and were some negatives that you learned from from those experiences? Um, I think a lot of things are really about building relationships. I think those coaches that build good relationships with recruits, those guys, um, they go on to get get the guys that they're trying to get. And the guys that just come in and try to talk them out, talk them out of stuff, that, that's a little bit different. Those are things that I've saw. And I think um, both of those have, have taught me the, the good things to do and the things I shouldn't. As, as one of St. Louis's own, as a guy who's been in those circles, how do you think, how quickly can your relationships, do you think, pay off? Um, I plan on getting to work ASAP. Um, and um, 
with hard work, I think they'll all play. I think it will pay off big for us. Uh, specialty areas besides St. Louis that you plan on working in? Um, I'm working wherever Coach Simeon. Yeah. Talk about the movement a lot on your Twitter, kind of like you're saying. Um, can you just explain what that is and what that means and how it's going to be brought here? The movement's always been about growing young men and putting them in position to be successful in life. And I think that's, that's the same thing I'll try to bring to help out around him. I just want to be able to help guys get where they want to go. I always say you can't save people. That's for God. So we can always help. We can always help guys get where they're trying to go. So that, that'll be a big thing for us. Corey, how much has been learning NCAA rules, doing all that? And when, when can you get out on the road? Um, I'm working on that right now. I'm working on all the rules and um, reading my manual and starting, start, starting to get ready. So, I mean, as soon as the test and things are done, I'll be, I'll be ready to go. Coach, how are you going to? I mean, tight end is no, is no position that we would think that you'd be a specialty at. But, like, how do you think you can do coaching tight ends this year? I think I can do great. I was a high school football coach. As a high school football coach, you coach everything. So I've coached, I've coached tight ends. I've coached running backs. I had an opportunity to do a lot. So I'm, I'm just ready to have some kind of impact on our program. Fifteen years ago, if you were to tell your 15-year-old self or that <laughs> Lovie Smith would be asking you to come join the program, what would you say? I'd laugh. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd believe it. But I mean, it's like a dream for me, and it's coming true. So I just got to put the work in. Coach, it seems like you and Thad Ward have a pretty good relationship. What's it like to finally get to coach on the, on the same side as him? Um, Thad's a guy that, that has a tremendous amount of work ethic. So um, I know I got my work cut out if I'm gonna be with him and be around him. I've, I've seen how hard he works. So that's a good guy to to kind of follow behind. St. Louis is getting nationally recruited now because of all the talent you guys have in there. What do you think is the opportunity for a program like Illinois with, with Coach Smith and with you and that? I think you just named those things. You got Coach Smith, um, myself. We got, um, I mean, it's close to home. I mean, it's a great, traditionally, it's a great program. I mean, it's great people around that care about, um, care about the young men. So I think we're in a good position. Coach, have you met with the, um, the guys who will be in your position room? Has that started yet? Um, I've talked to a few of them. Yeah, I had a couple of them in just to have some good conversation, yeah. Coach, talk about your personal life, though. Like, this is a big change from high school football to, to college football. What's the biggest um, impact that's happened so far? Um, just getting to know everything. I think that's the biggest impact, just getting to know what I need to be doing, how things really work, learning the right way to do things. That's, that's the biggest thing that's going on with me right now. What's been your former players' reaction? I know that was tough early on, but, but what's – kind of been the relationship there? Um, yeah, I told Coach that was the hardest thing I've ever done um, with telling those guys because I, I never just coached them. They were always around me every day. You know, I saw those guys every day. So um, right now they're all in a good place. They're excited for me. I mean, and, and that's kind of what family is. They're excited to see me move on and have some success. So they're, they're rooting for me right now. So that's a good thing. You know, one of the things, of course, I don't think uh, – I think most of you will agree, and of course most of our fans will agree, we need to score more points, as simple as that. And when I started looking you know, for our new coordinator, um, I, I did, I looked at stats to see who was really doing what, who had success this past year. And uh, the most important stat, I think, as you talk offensive football, is scoring. And, uh, and Rod, uh, Rod Smith's group you know, at the University of Arizona, uh, did a great job with that, top five scoring. Um, I really believe in running the football. We believe in running the football, top of the, you know, the charts with, uh, you know, rushing the football also. So that was a starting spot. Uh, got a chance to talk with Rod on the phone first and then, you know, bring him here to Champaign and having time to get on the board and letting him go over, uh, you know, the, our, our plan of how, uh, of what, uh, our University of Illinois offense would look like. So just really uh, thrilled to have him on staff, just like with Corin. Uh, as you go back through Rod's history, which we, which we did, whether it's University of South Florida or uh, you know, West Virginia University, uh, University of Michigan, Indiana, uh, you got the same things. So uh, again, we're just excited to have Rod uh, lead our offense. And I'll bring up Rod Smith now. Uh, first of all, uh, very uh, appreciative to be here. Uh, 
I want to thank Coach Smith, Josh as well for uh, having me. And I'm excited to get moving forward, uh, trying to lead this offense and get us to where we all want to be, and that's winning football games. So take any questions you have. What's your week been like since you got the job? Uh, a lot of paperwork, <laughs> a lot of HR, a lot of uh, – Interaction with the players, you know, I got up and, and went to the 6 a.m. run the other day just to go meet the guys, you know. Uh, sometimes you get caught behind your office doing so much paperwork, you don't get a chance to meet the men in the building. And uh, I hadn't had a chance to do that yet, so I made sure I got up to go see those guys, watch them run, watch them work out, and then, uh, you know, get a chance to meet them. And they've been stopping by the office the last several days. So it's, it's hectic, but it's, it's been very fun. Brad, you recruited the West Coast a lot. Yes, sir. Um, w w you, you did that in Michigan. You've done that at you know programs in the Midwest. What's the challenge of that, or um, what do you think of recruiting kids from the West Coast all the way to Illinois? Well, when, you, when you're talking about the West Coast, you, I mean, there's there's a plethora of kids, uh, and they're all they will all travel. Um, you know, there's some that's going to stay home, just like most other states will do. But there's so many kids they can't take them all. Uh, the in-state school. So, you know, you have an opportunity to go in, sell your program, sell your vision. Uh, I know Coach Smith's presence will be strong as far as his name recognition and, and, and just the U University of Illinois is going to be tremendous. So um, I think there's definitely a, a, a great sh chance of being able to lure kids. Um, obviously, you look for people who have uh, maybe a hook or a family. Sometimes it makes it a little bit easier, but, you know, there's got to be a commonality there. But, you know, definitely it'll be a draw for us. What you guys did offensively, offensively last year, exactly what you had to do or a lot different, or is that kind of to be decided? You're talking about for here? Yeah, right now? Yeah. I, you know, I think every year it's always a little bit different because you got to see what type of talent you're dealing with. You know, what can your quarterback do? What can he do? Um, so you know, there's some evaluation that happens. But overall, there's a, there, there's a base philosophy that we're going to adhere to. Um, we're going we're to spread the defense out. We're going to try to make them defend all 53 and a third, you know, by formation. Try to make them defend us schematically by pushing the ball down the field at times. Um, well, I think the hardest skill to do in football is to tackle a skilled kid in open open field. I think that's very tough. So we're going to try to get guys out in space. And, uh, you know, it's our job to put them in great situations, one-on-one -on -one situations, and, and, uh, and they got to make plays. Other than paperwork and getting settled in, What's the first thing you want to do? You know, what's the next thing for you here in the next week or two? Well, the biggest thing for me is one, I want to get to know the players, yeah. get to get to know this team, uh, get to know my staff. I'm the new guy. I mean, at least Corey's had a chance. He he, he knows Thad. You know, I, I'm I'm the I'm the, the new guy that has to kind of you know embrace myself with everyone. So I look forward to meeting everyone uh, and just getting down to work. So, Quail Tate, your quarterback at Arizona, obviously when you're dealing with that kind of natural gifting, it's a little different, but what, what was the key to getting so much out of him so early in his career? Well, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's twofold. I mean, a lot of it is a, is a kid. You can't, take, you can't take all the credit. There, there, there's, a, there's a talent level. There's, there's, a, there's an inner drive by certain kids that, that want to be great, and Khalil was that way. Um, at the same time, there's things that I had to do to take him where he couldn't take himself. I had to teach him. I had to work with him. I got, I got to spend time with him. You see, so you sacrifice, and you do the little things you need to do in order to, for that kid to hopefully to see his goals uh, come to fruition. And Khalil was like that. He was, you know, obviously he's ultra talented, but you know, he, he was willing to put in the work and he was willing to do the things that I asked him to do. And and there was a trust factor. And and. Corey mentioned before, you know, you, you gotta you gotta develop trust within from coaches to players, coaches to coaches. I mean, there's a trust factor that's gotta go where everybody's pulling in the same direction. And if you don't have that, then you could hit rocky times, obviously. You you have only four games of experience at quarterback right now uh, on the roster. W would you guys like to add a veteran presence to that group? And if not, w what's the challenge for you as an offensive coordinator? Yeah, I mean, obviously we we, we need more numbers. We need more numbers of the position. We would like to, to try to add uh, some guys moving forward. Now, who would that be? You know, myself and Coach Smith will determine that as we go. Uh, but definitely, we need to we need to upgrade that position in terms of depth um, moving forward. Coach, how hard is it to leave a talent like Khalil Tate at Arizona? How hard is it? 
it's always hard because you, you like I said, you develop relationships. It, this game is all about relationships, in my opinion. I mean, you, you, you get out what you invest. And so I invested a lot of time with Khalil. He invested a lot of time with me um, and the other players as well. So it is hard, but at the same time, I know moving forward, he's going to be in good hands. There's a lot of good coaches in this profession, and that's a good, that's a very good staff that's taken over, that's going to take him over. Um, so he'll be fine, because I know what the young man has inside of him, and uh, you know, it's now it's time for us to turn the page and, and, and move on to the next chapter. What do you look for in offensive linemen? We always talk about quarterbacks and, and skill guys, but offensive line wise, what are you looking for? Uh, is there certain guys on one side, and do you flip sides because they've been flipping sides here lately? You know, I, I've never flipped sides. We've, we've never did that. Um, you know, we've tried to find guys who we think they're athletic, that can bend, that can finish blocks. Uh, they have the ability to move. Uh, they're not stiff, per se. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's certain characteristics you look for. And I like the ability with the guys that not necessarily can play all five positions, but can play more than one position. You know, they're interchangeable, so you can move guys around if you need to be, if you get an injury, if you get a depth issue. So, you know, those are the type of things we're kind of looking for. But you, know, you want guys that are smart, they're tough, they're nasty, they'll finish, um, you know, can bend, can run, all those type of things. Coach, you look at how young this team is and the players you got coming back, how excited are you kind of just not only developing as players, but as men, because they're, we had, I think, not we, but Illinois had, like, Started so many freshmen last season. Played so many freshmen last season. I'm extremely excited. I'm, 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 I wish spring ball started tomorrow, to be honest with you. But, you know, I, I know there's some preparation that needs to be done. But I'm excited because of what the experience those guys had. I know that wasn't easy. I, I've been in years where it's like that, where you play so many freshmen, and it, it's tough. I mean, that's tough sledding, particularly in the Big Ten. Uh, but that'll pay off. That will pay off for those guys. And moving forward, and hopefully we start reaping some of those benefits this spring. Once they have time to get in the weight room, get a little stronger, be more mature, they've seen things now. It won't be a first time for everything now. Uh, it's in terms of blitz looks or front looks or anything like that, coverage looks that these kids may see. So I'm excited. There'll be more. There'll be more season per se. Uh, will they be ready? No. But you know, I'm excited to get going and see how far we can push them, how far we can take them. Brad, obviously you're putting together game plans, calling plays, all that. But for this to be your offense, what's that? What's that mean to you, and that you can put your stamp on this? Listen, guys, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I get it, but I'm, it, this ain't me. This is we're gonna do this together. I mean, we're a team. Um, you know, those guys in that room are gonna have as much influence on as what I'm gonna have because I'm gonna lean on them. They're gonna lean on me. I'm gonna provide the the direction. I'm gonna provide. Uh, the leadership, but at the same time, we're going to do this together. And we got some really good coaches on this staff. So, you know, I'm excited to get to get to know them even more and definitely get to work with them. But it is exciting to move forward, to know that how, you know, we got a young team coming back. Um, how much further, how much progress can we make from last year to, to, to next year? And that's to me, that's the that's the sense of urgency that we got to have moving forward. Coach, you spent the last six years down in Arizona. You're coming back to the Midwest, the cold. How much are you looking forward to that on the sidelines and bumping up in a big coat? Well, first off, I'm a polar bear, so I don't mind the cold. <laughs> Second of all, I will be up in that press box. Now, Corey might be having that big coat on, but no, I mean, I, I, you know, listen, I'm from the state of West Virginia. We got all four seasons. I've coasted Michigan. I've coasted Indiana. I mean, I'm used to it, man, so... Spot the ball and let's go. I don't care what the weather is. Is that the plan? You'll be up in the box probably. Is that what you'd like to do? Probably. I mean, that's, we, you know, like I said, we, I, I got here Monday. You know, Corey got here Thursday. So we're trying to figure all this out. But, you know, that's where I've been most of the time. But we'll see moving forward. We'll, we'll do what's best for our football team. Right, what was it like getting on a board with Coach Smith? And, and so, I'm sorry. What, what was it like getting on the whiteboard with Coach Smith and, and selling your vision? Yeah. Well, first off, it was. When, 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 when Coach called me the first time, I was, I didn't want to answer the phone because it was Lovey Smith. You know, I was, you know, I, I, listen, I grew up, I, I watched him coach in the Super Bowl. I watched him for all those times. So, you know, I was honored to just take the phone call. And then when he wanted to come in and, and, and interview, you know, um, 
that's one of the moments you go back and you tell your kids, hey, I, I got a chance to interview with Lovey Smith, you know what I mean? And then he offered me the job, for God's sakes, you know, can you believe that? So um, I was excited. I was thrilled, um, very, very humbled, very honored. And um, I, I think his vision, I think his, his perspective as a man, of what he wants to do with, with these guys as far as how to raise them up, how to coach them up, I just, I'm in tune with that 100%, and I couldn't be more excited. You guys score both points, obviously. How quickly can you make the turn? You got your eligibility left? I, yeah, I mean, that, that's the goal, obviously. We, I mean, we want this to – we want a fast turnaround. That's – but, you know, we'll see. I mean, I'm not going to put any predictions. I'm not going to put any statements. We're going to call, score this. We're going to roll up our sleeves and go to work and see what happens. But we're going we're, we're to try to do our best to get these guys in the best position to, to, to score some points. Thank you, guys. Yeah, as I said, we're, you know, as, as Rod and Corey said, we're kind of, you know, it's good to get the, you know, new semester underway and start off-season program, our off-season program. A lot of work to be done, you know. It's one thing about skiing, but how much can we improve? Individual improvement is what we're talking about right now. Um, we'll, I guess, eventually talk about the final part of our recruiting efforts, but uh, that is going well, and we just want to, you know, it's two minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, so we want to finish strong with our recruiting, and we feel like we'll do that. But thank you. If no more questions, yes, we. Uh, Mike Fair, leaving the staff. Yes. Uh, I know you're close with Mike. But what's that process been like, and, and what do you have to replace in losing a guy like that? Uh, well, we have to replace, you know, outstanding football coach, outstanding man. You know, we have history. You know, I coached Mike at Arizona State, so we've been together for a long period of time. Uh, but, you know, Good football coaches sometimes uh, decide to leave and and uh, take on a different challenge. That's a part of it. With our program, um, we're people that will want our our, our coaches. Uh, and the NFL will will take some of our coaches. That's okay. We're gonna. We'll, that's that's a part of it. The NFL will take some of our players. That's okay too. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll replace them with with other good coaches. Uh, you just met two outstanding coaches, and we're excited about what they're going to bring, something new to our, our program. So I have a, we have a few more coaches to hire, and we're in that process too. So we have a lot of things going on, but we'll get uh, other coaches that will continue to coach up our young man. Nathan Joss gets an opportunity to. What was your impression of him, um, and, and was he a candidate for a spot for you? Uh, absolutely. There's a reason why uh, we kept Nathan around this long. but. Uh, you know, sometimes when you've played at a university and only been at that university, it's good to go away, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, but Nathan Shieldhouse is bright. Again, he'll do a great job for Iowa State. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we haven't, you know, hopefully someday we'll get a chance to coach together again. In, in recruiting, just how, you know, these next couple of weeks, what, what are these going to be like for you with official visits? Nonstop. I made it here about – a few minutes before the press conference, uh, we're getting back to it. We have a big week weekend uh, on campus uh, this weekend. Uh, but, you know, recruiting's going well, and it's just not about right now. Of course, you know, we, we recruit two years in advance, so it's about, um, you know, uh, next year's class also and the following one, so a lot to be done. Would you like to add experience to that quarterback room uh, in the transfer market? Or Absolutely. As Rod said, we have how many? I, I, someone told me we had what one quarterback on scholarship on campus right now. Uh, we realize what, what those numbers say. And uh, so will we be adding other players, quarterbacks? Uh, yes, we will. We're in the process of that. And, and in time, once you see what we've done, I think you'll like what we're doing.